I think it's enormously liberating to be able to give individuals the power to investigate their world. Technology always starts as something esoteric and expensive, and then it filters down to the masses. And once the masses get a hold of it, we, we do fun things with it. Today we're building a two-stage rocket designed to reach 100,000 feet. John Carmack is sponsoring a competition for amateur rocketry enthusiasts to break 100,000 feet and publish the design for the rocket to help advance the state of the art. We built a two-stage rocket. So you start with one stage that burns for a while. You discard all the extra weight, leaving another rocket that fires again, and it flies the rest of the 80% of the flight. Two-stage was the only way we could reach the altitude we wanted, but it's very difficult to get a successful two-stage flight. The Black Rock Desert is the best place in the world for this kind of rocketry. We've got the biggest piece of nowhere uh, anywhere on Earth. It's a very challenging environment to launch in. There's wind, there's dust, it's hot. It makes life difficult every way it can. He's got a pretty cool model rocket out there. It's a screaming eagle, it's a little jet fighter. Everyone here is either an engineer or a, a hobbyist who loves getting their hands dirty. Three, two, one, launch. For us, this is all a big playground. Previously, getting into space has been governments. Now we're moving to the place where individuals can find a way to get close to space, right? We're doing it ourselves, as opposed to depending on other people doing it. So I think this is a trend of do it yourself. We've got our droid astronaut. He's, uh, he's getting ready for his first flight. We started to see that we could fit a phone in the nose cone of this 100,000 foot design. The phone's got a gyroscope, it's got an accelerometer, it's got a barometer, it's got a GPS. It's got all these sensors that make it sort of like a little miniature satellite that we could conceivably relay that data to a ground station. And that tells us an awful lot about what the rocket was doing in flight. There's only been a handful of amateurs that have gotten over 100,000 feet. The highest piece that men have gone to is Everest, which is 29,000 feet. Passenger jet flies roughly about the height of Everest, about 35,000 feet. U-2 spy plane went to 70, 80,000 feet. In order to get to 100,000 feet, we will have to fly roughly at three times the speed of sound, which is Mach 3, roughly about 2,000 miles an hour. That is 50% faster than the fastest military jet aircraft flown by the U.S. today. From 100,000 feet, you can start to see the curvature of the Earth. You can see the black of space. It's amazing that I can build something in my basement that gets to the edge of the Earth's atmosphere. It's the nearest thing to being an astronaut. We're flying tomorrow morning. Success is guaranteed. Did I just say that on camera? Wow. <laughs> I think there's nothing more ecstatic and more frightening, actually, is when something you build is sitting in the launch bed. Butterflies galore in the last few seconds just before you push the button, because at that point, you're, you don't have any control of it. It's off on its own. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Turns out the rocket was in hugely rugged country. We would never have found it if I didn't know it was there 
and if I could look at Google Maps and say that there were actually roads to get there. Here's our guy. <laughs> nothing broken, nothing chipped. He's all good. No, 300,000 feet is the demarcation of space. That's, that's really space. And um, we're not sure if we can get there or not, but we think we can get awfully close. The thrill of this thing compels me to try and go a little better, a little faster, a little higher. 